Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisor Channel. My name is Chris and bringing it to you here as the bubbles are lighting up green on the hourly time frame. Market is getting a bit of a bounce and Bitcoin still in the consolidation range. Uh, we are right at the range low. Bouncing off the 382 fib on a bullish retracement. That is your last line in the sand. That is the line of the Mohicans. Any kind of a four hour closure back below this level and very likely... Um, well, we come down a bit further, and I just want to go on record. I am longing this baby right here at the level. Um, long for about seven Bitcoin long there. And uh, yep, I am going to buy the bottom side of the range. Just doing what I said and a stop loss right below 58,000. You know, um, what is the risk to reward opportunity here? Well, I will tell you right now, and I could be a fool, for doing this, but um, right below 58,000, that's fair enough. So back to the top side of the range here um, is going to be 72,660 on the four hour time frame. Could we go for a little bit more? Would I front run it with a probably a profit right here at about 71? Nice risk to reward ratio, and that is almost. Uh, Five to one, five to one. So I will take my chances there and, uh, you know, risk 3% to make 20%. Not a bad trade set up here. And again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but Bitcoin still in the consolidation zone. And the setup for the end of 24, uh, 2024 is bullish, um, in my opinion. And why is that? We've got the ETF approvals. We've got the Fed pivot perhaps coming here. I think Jerome is going to speak tomorrow. We've got the elections, global liquidity. But what's more interesting is the fact we've had this demand shock meets supply shock. And that should be an impressive, uh, impressive bit of data. So, you know, what else will we have here? Um, I'm looking for some bullish divergence here where the price is making higher lows and the RSI is making lower lows. And from this pivot right here, you can see there is a whole slew of lower lows. One, two, three, four. Now, is this confirmed as a local low? I would need to see a closure. If you're aggressive, more back above 60,896, more conservative back above 6199. And back above this pivot, 64.5, uh, I would say, you know, um, parties on to the upside with the stock market down 300 points. Here's the big news in the market here. And I think it's time for a little tuker time as I absolutely love this coin, love this meme. I think um, tuker is going to go nuts here. But this, this, this is it. This is it. Konnichiwa, and quit bullshitting Kore wa kontun to suru kamoshiremasen, which pretty much means strap in, folks, cause shit's about to get real. Yes, I am of course referring to the world's premier shitcoin, the Japanese yen, which last week hit a 34-year low against the dollar, triggering widespread concern about a potential contagion. So what the hell is going on and why does it matter? To shed some light on this issue, I'm thrilled to welcome a leading macro thinker and the Real Vision CEO, joining us all the way from the Love. sunny Cayman Islands. Love Ru this Paul. guy too. Rupe Paul. Happy to be here, Toka. Can you give us a brief overview of what's happening in Japan and the implications for global markets? The first thing you need to understand, Tuka, is that Japan has effectively been performing an economic kind of harakiri for years, sacrificing the strength of its currency for the sake of its export-driven economy and global financial stability. So we've seen these aggressive monetary easing policies, such as quantitative easing as well as low or negative interest rates, which have underpinned the roughly $4.6 trillion global carry trade on the Japanese yen. And what exactly is the carry trade? Well, it's effectively borrowing yen at low interest rates and then investing in higher yielding assets in different currencies. And as I said, there's trillions of dollars involved. So any major unwinding could spell one of the fastest financial fuck-ups in all of recorded history. The question now is the degree of a BOJ intervention and the effects on the bond markets. You know, I was out wine tasting last night in Little Cayman and I got speaking to a senior guy at one of the largest investment banks in the world. If you want to see the rest, well, you better join the Tuker bandwagon. Um, look at that Japanese yen just getting pounded. And... What they're talking about here is, well, the carry trade. So Japanese, the Japanese had famously 
left their interest rates at zero or negative for quite some time. And you can see since December 2020, well, uh, the yen's down 35% since uh, January 2023. So call it a year and a half ago. We are down 20%. How low can she go is the question. And well, we're coming in right into range support here. This is where we should get a bounce. Uh, my guess is that they are, in fact, going to bounce this thing. I think this was our target. We shot that one to the downside. And just doing a quick little analysis here as well, using our FIB tool. Wow, that can go down a bit more. Um, where is that first target? Wow. Wow. I guess I guess um, the Japanese yen can go down more, and that's why they're calling it a shit going but apparently, uh, if you borrow money at 0% interest, you can though go reinvest that money in U.S. Treasury bonds at 3 or 4% and get a bunch of free money. People are doing it with trillions of dollars. But now, what happens if you borrowed money at 0% and you bought T-bills at 3 or 4% and now the currency is falling 20%? So eventually, you're going to have to pay that money back in yen, which means you have to sell your bonds and buy more yens at a loss. I mean, that, or, or at, at a discount, it just makes sense. I, I, I think, I think the yen is due for a bounce. I could be wrong here. I could be absolutely wrong, but, uh, the dollar, as we have said, has been bullish and, uh, this is going to, you know, hurt the gold price eventually here. Um, how's gold doing? Gold is pulling back. If you've been following our channel, we talked about this. We hit the 1618 fib. It got front run. Close enough is close enough. It might have one more bounce, but overall, I'm expecting a bit more downside action. And with a retrace on gold back to about 2100, uh, would be fairly normal. Um, as volatility is about to decline, we are crossing down from a Perfect level. Time to short gold on the weekly time frame. And back on to Bitcoin. So uh, we're talking about where to long. And let's check out. And by the way, you know, not to toot my own horn, we did say, hey, look, bearish divergence on the weekly, on the five day time frame. Where could this go? Well, um, more specifically on the daily time frame, I do want to check in on this. And I think this is a bit of a liquidity grab. Where's the liquidity? Yeah, I would suspect a bounce from this level. I'm going to say more likely to bounce than not. How's that volatility looking? It's declining. Yeah, we're going to bounce, guys. It's time to bounce. It's time to bounce. And don't be surprised when Jerome Powell comes out tomorrow and says what he always says. We're going to be data dependent. Inflation's going up. GDP's going down. Jobs reports, jobs reports, what's going on with the jobs reports here? So consumer confidence, Dallas Fed, housing prices were bullish. We're in the 18-year real estate bull market cycle. Yes, uh, they're saying real estate is going to continue to party on to the upside for the next nine years. So I hope you own your home. I hope you own your home, guys. Uh, tomorrow, what is coming out tomorrow? Tomorrow, high economic impact, SMP Global Manufacturing, going to be hotter than, oh, tomorrow's the jolts numbers. Tomorrow is the jobs numbers. That is Fed interest rate decision tomorrow, 5.5% going into the Fed rate decision. Are they going to cut rates tomorrow? If we cut rates, that'll be a stimulus for the economy. If he doesn't cut rates, which is what? is likely to happen according to the fed rate hike tool simulator um <clears throat> rate hike tool simulator where is my uh rate hike i just turned 140 dollars into 1300 dollars over the last two weeks Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm gonna give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto. 
but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto traders dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. Tool simulator. Da, 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 da. Don't make me log in. There's a 98% chance that rates will stay the same and a 1% chance that they are going to cut. June. No cuts. July. 20% chance they're going to cut rates in July. 30% chance they're going to cut rates in September. No. 40% chance they're going to cut in November. So it's about 50-50 going into the last quarter of the year. And if they do cut rates the last quarter of the year, well, that could be awesome for the markets. And here's what I would say, guys, 100%. You're seeing people start to lose their mind and conviction in this chop. Just being spot in. I mean, look. That's why you follow the YouTube channel. That's why you like and subscribe. That's why you watch this stuff every day is so you can keep abreast of the market and you don't capitulate. When fear is setting in, you're going to hold strong with those diamond hands knowing that, hey, we've got a plan. We've got a mission, a mission to Mars, a mission to the moon for Bitcoin. And these little hiccups where Bitcoin sneezes 20 or 30 percent, guys, it's just going to be a blip in the long term uptrend that's sideways and up forever for Bitcoin. What am I talking about? Look at these higher lows, guys. Look at these higher lows all the way through. I mean, look at the monthly time frame, by the way. Month, we did talk about this. And we said it yesterday that a tick below the last month's low, um, at least we did it in our meeting. This is Bitcoin, guys. This is Bitcoin strong and long up and to the right. That is what happens. And typically, the having. 45 days of consolidation after the first halving, 158 days of consolidation after the second halving, 72 days after the third halving. So what does consolidation look like? Look, this is a massive uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. And where's the next higher low come in? Look, world, world of domination and just absolute carnage in the markets is nothing. Like this is a blip. And uh, I think the Fed knows it. And that's why they're not lowering rates, right? If they start to lower rates, that means, oh, no, people are not spending money. GDP is really going down. People are really losing their jobs. And they got to stimulate the economy. We're not in stimulus zone yet. The stock market is probably going to have a little more downside. OK, we got a silver cross, purple 200 intact. But this is completely normal after a breakout this is the cup and handle. I mean, the measure move off of this giant cup and handle on the daily time frame for the NASDAQ is way, way higher. So could this be selling May and go away? Could be, but um, could you miss the bottom of the... Look at that. That, that, looks more, that looks more like what is eventually going to happen to the stock market by the end of the year for NASDAQ, 20,000, I'd say first quarter, second quarter of next year, especially if Trump gets elected, boom. NASDAQ's looking strong and long and just it's, it's just the market that never goes down, never goes down, guys. And all the fear mongering and all the, oh, this is a recession. Oh, we're dying. You know, it just never happens. They're going to print into infinity. That's why Bitcoin's going to go higher. And <clears throat> again, for the altcoin season party, we talked about maybe one more stab up to the upside for Bitcoin dominance. We hit that 60 percent and then nail it down a rollover, something like that. Um, that is going to be a indicator for alt season party to the upside. So we covered gold, Dixie, dollar. We covered, I think that's enough out of me. Um, just taking a look again on the hourly time frame. Bounces are coming. Um, on the daily, we're not all red now. We're not all red. And over the year, whiff, hat, bonk, akash, Pepe and Bonk and Whiff, okay? Those have been the party coins. Notice Ondo on the side, Ribbon Finance, Tau, the number one AI coin, Rune. So um, ETH down 23% for the year. Could it be a buying opportunity? Let's take a look at 
the ETH Bitcoin chart really quick here. And then I'm going to let you guys go on your merry way. Make sure you do throw a obliterate the like button with your right finger, your middle finger, your pinky finger. I don't know what index finger you click the mouse with, but do me a favor. Don't forget to hit that button. And let's take a look at ETH BTC. I mean, this is where the billionaires are made. This is your last chance, in my opinion, to take the bull by the horns and say, no, no, I will not capitulate. I will not. I will not. I will hold long and strong. And <clears throat> I heard Eigenlayer today was up, up to some no good. Up to, I, I don't know what the rumor is exactly, but um, restaking your staked ETH, I mean, it sounds like a scam if you ask me, but apparently people are doing it. Hey, everybody's jumping off the bridge. Just go with them, right? It's like no big deal, right? Um, looking at the weekly, we put in a lower low with a slew of lower highs. So the question is, is this going to be the bottom for ETH Bitcoin? So Ethereum can bootstrap its way back up, back up to the heavens, up to ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, where it probably ends up at some point. Um, we just want to see... A little trend reversal here on the daily time frame so we do got the higher low in we've got the higher high and yes that does look like a trend reversal could we swipe down one more time yes of course but um you know official bull party ethereum bitcoin back above this level bitcoin dominance shafting down and i mean bitcoin can still go up when dixie goes up it still can it absolutely can and nine times out of 10, when you get these little downtrend, these little wicks like this, look at this. Perfect test there. Grabbing the liquidity. Lastly, we want to check out high block capital. People are now net short. So, you know, could we grab the last little bit of liquidity down here at 58K? 57K. Could we? Could we? Absolutely. Especially if stocks bleed it out even more. But I'm in the opinion... I'm in the opinion, I'm in the opinion, I'm seeing opinions all over the place. Long's in, and yeah, I will risk 3% to make 20%, and then yeah, if we if we wick below there, yeah, it could go lower, it absolutely could. It absolutely could go lower, but to me, 15 minute time frame, things are beginning to turn around here, and that is what you want to see for a bit of a bottom here. These high volume candles. We are coming into the dead gap zone where, yes, the market makers will have their way with you. But you see these two high volume. That's a tweezer. That's a tweezer top reversal candle. Can we V bottom out of this thing? Absolutely. Um, yeah, short term, 61,000 back above that level. More importantly, this level right here, back above here on the hourly even. On the hourly, will look good, will look good for a bit of a bounce. And yeah, see all the liquidity, all the stop losses are right there. So that's where, you know, maybe a slow reversal takes place. And um, yeah, I think that's it out of me. I did want to take a look at Mr. Mr. PP coin, Pepe coin. Um, bull flag, falling wedge. What do you know? This thing is just going to continue to bounce, guys. It's going to continue to bounce hard. I'm of the opinion above 645 on the next two-hour closure probably results in a bounce. Probably results in a bounce. A mean reversion bounce at the very least for Mr. Pepe. How's AGIX holding up here? How's when coin? Everything's at the bottom of the range, right? So it's about to either bounce or not bounce or not is capitulation coming are we gonna are we gonna reverse out of here what is Powell gonna do tomorrow to send the market into a tailspin or is he gonna boost the market um, eventually I think he does give it a boost guys and uh, really just you know waiting for some confirmations on some of these altcoins but I do think Bitcoin is worth taking a stab right now Hey, if you did like the video, comment below, ask a question, say what's up, and we will get back to you. All right, have a blessed and highly favored day, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.